Hey, welcome back into the studio. It is Thursday, the 10th of February, and I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director here at Ori Neighborhood Television, and we are in our fourth day of the 2022 Owen TV Food Drive for the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. And as you can see on your screen, we have an updated uh, total. It is uh, 56.35, so to start the week, we were aiming for five grand and we have blown by that number uh, by a wide margin, and we have now changed our collection goal due to all the generous donations from our sponsors. We are upping it to $6,500. The other great thing, uh, we've had a great outpouring of physical donations, uh, of dry goods and the variety of just canned goods coming in and filling our van, and our van is nearly full, so it's not quite full, but it's nearly full. And I know the kids at Lake Orion High School are continuing to collect on our behalf, and we have the community coming in, and we are filling our van. So if you have anything to drop off, to donate, uh, drop it off at 1349 Joslin Road at the Orion Center, at the Owen TV Studios, the big white vans in the parking lot with its big door open. We got a couple caution cones by it, big orange thing, so you can see uh, that it's right there. So just stop on over. Drop off the food and you're good to go. How can you donate? There's three ways. You can donate online. Visit uh, orionontv.org and click the Food Drive logo. It'll take you right to our GoFundMe account, which will be active through um, business hours on Friday. So make sure you get those donations in. But you can also donate in person, like I mentioned earlier. You can bring your non-perishable food items over to 1349 Joslin Road at our Owen TV studios at the Big Blue Building at the Orion Center and you can help us fill our production van or you can drop off a donation in person and we've had a lot of donations dropped off in person check in hand hand it right over to the staff as you know there are some fees taken out by gofundme when you donate online so if you want to avoid those fees and make sure your donation 100 percent of it gets to fish come on into the studios at 1349 joslin road boy it's been a busy week we've had a lot of entertainment in here a lot of crazy stuff um uh, I've, I, I, I ruined a lot the hearing of a, dog, a lot of dogs yesterday playing my guitar live on the air <laughs> with some true musicians. We had a good time. It was fun. Uh, we learned about music and the inspirations uh, you know, for why music is so important. We talked about sports this week. We've, we've had cooking shows. Today it's do-it-yourself day. right? And Evelyn Doyle, a longtime volunteer at Owen TV, is here with us in the studio. Uh, thank you for coming in, Evelyn. Really appreciate it. Happy to be here. Yep, and we're going to we're going to uh, chat with Evelyn in just a moment and mm -hmm. learn about her journey with Owen TV over the course of how many? We, we're trying to add it up. Ten? Probably nine or ten nine years. Nine or ten years, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, she's been with us a long time. We're going to talk about Owen TV and and yeah. her show, which we're going to see today, since it's do do it yourself day. Uh, she has some crafting uh, items that she's brought with her. Yes. And she's going to have her actual do a live show of her program mm -hmm. called Guess What? Yes. So she's awesome. <laughs> she knows what she's doing. Yeah. It's fantastic to have her in the studio. And the other element of our programming today will be uh, our pro uh, production coordinator, Joey Tysick, will be in the studio with me. And we're going to go over if you ever wanted to live stream or podcast from home. We're going to share with you uh, how you can do that uh, on a minimal budget, or if you got a lot of money to spend, hey, you can <laughs> spend it on a lot of gear, but uh, you don't have to. Okay, so that is uh, that's our programming for today. Before we get into any of all that stuff, we want to thank our sponsors. Our sponsors today have been so generous and really have pushed us uh, over that five thousand dollar mark uh, right out of the gate. So we want to thank them. Without their generous uh, support of uh, ON TV, the food mm -hmm. drive, and of Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry, we would never be where we are at today with the donations. So we do have a thank you video uh, for our sponsors for today. Take a look. All of us at ON TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2022 ON TV Food Drive is brought to you by Canterbury Village. Located at 2359 Joslin Court in Orion Township. They're a first time sponsor to the food drive and donated $1,000. You can find more information about Canterbury Village by visiting their website, canterburyvillage.com, or give them a call at 248 931 1900. Meyer of Auburn Hills, 
located at 800 Brown Road in Auburn Hills. They are a returning sponsor for the food drive, donating $900 toward our goal. For more information about Meyer, give them a call at 248-393-5100 or visit Meyer.com. M3 Investments, located at 99011 Main Street in Royal Oak. They're a longtime sponsor for the food drive. This year, they donated $500 to the drive. For more information about M3 Investments, you can give them a call at 248-543-3400. Kroger, located at 3097 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township. This year, Kroger is a three-day sponsor thanks to a generous $300 donation to the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Kroger, visit their website, Kroger.com, or give them a call at 248 393 0765. Skalnik Ford, located at 941 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Skalnik Ford is a longtime sponsor of the food drive and is returning this year with a $100 donation toward our final goal. For more information, you can give them a call at 248 693 6241 or visit skalnikford.com. Oat Soda, located at 197 South Broadway Street in Lake Orion. The downtown restaurant donated $100 to Fish and is a one-day sponsor of the food drive this year. If you want to know more about Oat Soda, you can visit their website at oatsodalakeorion.com or give them a call at 248-558-2900. And Northern Wholesale Flooring located at 118 Indian Wood Road in Lake Orion. Northern Wholesale Flooring is a returning partner of the Food Drive as a two-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website at nflooring.com. Northern Wholesale Flooring is a returning partner with the Food Drive and have always been an active part in the community. Here's a video about Northern Wholesale Flooring. The history, well, it was uh, back in uh, 1985, uh, Northern was founded, um, and uh, I purchased it um, in uh, early 2004, so it was uh, almost 20 years old when I purchased it, and uh, that puts us at, uh, what if I have that right, 36 years, I think, uh, 36, 37 years now that uh, Northern's been serving uh, the uh, Orion uh, community as well as surrounding communities. Times are changing, and uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in that if we don't change with them, um, then uh, then we're going to be left behind. And so, uh, yeah, you know, when I bought the store, it was uh, located there in uh, the plaza next to OPA, uh, which is uh, that plaza is most known for. And, um, and we were there for a long time. Um, and then um, I had the opportunity to buy a building on 24, which I, I did with the, uh, the intention of going to a, a more full service, high end, kind of a destination flooring store. And the reality is at the same time I was doing that, the industry was changing. And the industry was changing to a lot of online sellers and to uh, the big box stores. Uh, really the strength of the big box stores has become um, very challenging for independent retailers and many independent retailers went away. So at that point, I uh, made the decision to change up the model um, and it was painful because I we had a beautiful space there and um, still that great reputation, but um, I, I believed that we needed to, uh, to evolve. And now you know, the great thing is with the floor trader, the addition of the floor trader, we have a lot more space here. We have uh, over 100,000 feet of flooring in stock and we have better buys than anybody. I mean, any big box store, um, when it comes to quality for price, there is nobody that can touch us and especially our independent uh, retail friends and, and big box and you know the Costco's and all of them. So we've created a destination that gives uh, customers what they need regardless of what end of the spectrum they're on in terms of their needs for flooring. And, um, and I couldn't have done that in that location. So as much as it hurt, uh, we, we did what we had to to be relevant uh, for today's customer. And they're, they're why we're here. So if we aren't changing for them, then I think uh, that we're making a mistake. Um, I love what we do and we're proud of our business, but the reality is um, uh, I'm a believer that it is our responsibility as a business in a small community 
to, um, to take care of our community. And, um, and so, you know, we started uh, many, many years ago with um, a few efforts, like we used to do packages for the troops when the, uh, we had a lot of people overseas, and we did that in honor of one of our locals that uh, passed, uh, Raymond Plower, who uh, was, uh, lost his life in the, the conflict in Iraq. And, uh, and, and so back in those days, we were there for that family, and we, we built a partnership with them. And then it just kind of evolved to any time there was a need, we tried to jump in. And, and quite frankly, I spend uh, um, way more of my time doing that at this point personally than I do on our business. And I leave that to our staff, uh, which is, uh, you know, we're real proud of them as well. Um, but the reality is there's a lot of needs. Um, most recently, obviously, Oxford uh, took over our facility, and we, we were, um, you know, kind of the, uh, the logistics hub for everything that was happening in Oxford. Uh, but right now we're dealing with uh, the fire downtown. We have a fundraiser for them this weekend. We also are collecting food for, for this food drive. And I'm looking forward to being a part of that as well and helping to make sure that you guys meet the goal. Um, so there are so many needs in our community. And, and I'd say more than, more than ever, at least it feels that way. And so um, we, uh, we believe it's our responsibility and duty to be a part of that. And, and quite frankly, we encourage um, all of you out there uh, to patron the businesses because when I when I do anything in charity we reach out to all my local business friends and there are many of them that come through time after time after time and are here for us to help us be able to take care of people when they're in need in these tragedies and um, I would encourage you to to follow me follow what we're doing and those businesses and support those businesses in the community because the reality is if if I didn't have those businesses to lean on I couldn't do what we do as a team here and as a team in the community to help others. So we we need businesses that give back and um, we just uh, really encourage our, our locals to keep that in mind when you're making purchases. If you're buying from a big box store, not that they're bad people, but they probably aren't doing a lot in our local community. And, uh, and there's a lot of businesses that, you know, don't focus on the community and we just think that uh, your money would be better spent in helping those that help make our community the great amazing place that it is. You guys need to drive up here with some food, better yet drive up with some cash and if you're a company you need to call in and you need to you need to donate some money to help keep this food pantry stocked for all of our guests so I challenge all of you join us in this fight and, uh, and if everybody does a little bit, it's really not that challenging and we can, we can do uh, great things together. All right, uh, we thank all of our sponsors for their generous donations, including Home Depot and somebody from here, a very familiar face, our good friend Alana Hart from Home Depot is here. Yeah. Uh, every year we have the food drive. Home Depot is a sponsor. You yes. have been since I think we've moved here I, in yeah. 2012, was, almost 10 I years. I was going to say almost 10 years we've been uh, helping out. Yeah. And our associates love it. Look, it's something easy they can do, right? They yeah. can go to the grocery store, pick up a few cans, or even give a few dollars. So this year, that is what is exciting. We've never no. had money <laughs> donations. Everybody's always just it's, brought in yes. the food. And it's always been like cartons, like this, uh, crates of food. Yes. And uh, the cases of food and the tra uh, you, you and I are usually unloading uh, the, the yes. day of the food drive, just loading stuff in and to have those funds now. Yes. How? Uh, what's the tally? Well, Can I so, add? Do, yeah, do we, so do we, we know? Yeah, so we had $140 awesome. um, in cash. And the exciting thing about that is that's what the associate said is, how else can I help? If I don't yeah. want to go to the grocery store, yes. what can I do? And cash, and it worked. cash that's or check. Oh, however you want to do absolutely. it. Absolutely, and that's great. And that's kind of what we're doing uh, for the last two years, pandemic. You know, we haven't yeah. seen you in two <laughs> years. It's pretty wild. And so to start seeing people again, and but the food drive uh, molded into this food and fund drive, right? For GoFund, with a GoFundMe account. Yeah. And last year it worked out great. And this year we're kind of getting back to a little bit of normalcy with the donations, but also the fund drive. Yes. And Fish was saying, I mean, you guys interact with so many community uh, groups and you know about Fish. I mean, yes. everybody knows about Fish. And so with Fish, they were saying the funds are so important these days mm -hmm. because the cost of different items, they can hang on to the funds, they right. can use them when they need it. They can be exactly. strategic with their spending. And sometimes that is what goes further, right? Um, yeah. Not to discredit any donations, but to your point, Ian, people finding out about it and talking about it just with all of our associates, 
They didn't even know that, oh, is that what that building is when I drove <laughs> yeah. by on Lapeer Road? Yes. Um, so, you know, it's so important to talk about it and to bring awareness to it and yeah. that just a, a, a few canned goods can go so far it can. for and, and families in need. And a few dollars, right? Exactly. $140 is roughly 300 pounds of food. There you right? go. I mean, okay. You, you okay, I didn't know that. Right? So that's what I learned. Yes, there you go. because you can buy bulk. They have different buying yeah. structures, right? Yeah. So that is huge. And again, it's great to see Home Depot with us, you know, always with us. I know you're always with us. Yes. And uh, see you out and about. And it's great to see our good friend Alana Hart here. Hey, we're in the lobby. We just got a big yes. donation of food from Home Depot yeah. and some uh, cash donations, which is fantastic. Yeah, and some other things, yeah. you know, we do is yeah, yeah, yes, about please. soap. You know, think oh, yes. about soap and toothpaste and all that. Um, but really, it's too about our foundation. So our yes. foundation does so much in which the community. Is magnificent. Yeah, and we we're really blessed to be able to do that. But we couldn't do it without our associates. And it's all volunteer, and they take either an extra day off or just donate their time. Yeah. And that's what it's about, right? And everybody knows my saying, but I always say that if you take <laughs> care of a community, a community is going to take care of you. And your foundation, we need to talk about that. Yeah, let's so talk about it. So tell us, uh, we know, because we've been working together <laughs> yeah. so long, of the, the projects you guys have worked on. Give us a little sample of some of the Ooh. projects you guys have worked on that are, I mean, there's, some are visible, some are high profile, yes. some are not so high profile. Exactly. Give so us a um, something that's a little hidden that people don't know about is at the Orion Veterans Memorial. Behind one of the walls is a victory garden. And so we grow food for the local veterans there. I didn't and know that. yeah, and we donate through the whole growing season. Awesome. And it's for those that either you know are less fortunate or maybe they're homebound. They just can't get out. Yeah. So that's something we do is that and we're going to expand it in the fall. Awesome. It's going to be bigger to provide for more veterans. And so that's one we've done the Orient Art Center, the American Legion in both Lake Orion and Oxford. Okay. This year also um, at Friendship Park, the township has a garden up there that you yes. can rent the garden beds right and yep. grow your own so we're going to expand that and we're going to put in raised beds this you year hear that? yeah expansion always a yeah. good thing so we're going to build the beds though in our parking lot and then transport them okay. over there but we're building in raised beds to help with the senior center because right now those beds are so low to the ground yeah. that if you do have a disability or something you're not you, able you to partake in that's it. That's right. You can't ex access it. It's not you, yes. you can't get you're right. You can't get up or yes. you can't get down. Very exactly. Good. So that will be expanded uh here in the spring. So that's something to look forward to and Oh my gosh, awesome. the, the list goes on. I, I, we've we helped could, Noda, we, we've helped yes, all different Yes, we could be ones. here a long time, but yes. it's good to hear some of the new new pieces going in, the, yeah. the Victory Garden, that's that's fantastic. And uh, hey, check out Home Depot, homedepot.com, right? Yeah. Uh, and give your address real quick. Oh, uh, we're it, on 2600 South Lapeer, so we are the Lake Orion store. Yes. And, uh, our neighbors but, just up the road. Yeah, and all, but all of our associates are great at giving back, and uh, just thank you for the opportunity. And hopefully, this goes really far for those families in need. Oh, it will, and we thank you and Home Depot as always for all of your support. And You're it's welcome. great to see you again. I it's know. been so long; it's crazy. I know. So, uh, Home Depot, take a look at this uh, this donation pack. Look at this. Yes. All from the associates at Home Depot. Yep, at the Lake Orion Home Depot. At the Depot. Lake Orion Home Depot. Yep. Show them your support. Tell them you thank it. Thank them. Pop over there. Tell them to say thank you for the donations and all that good stuff. Yes. Yes. And, and uh, we'll and we'll carry it on, right? What that yeah. put us at fifty eight hundred, I think. Yes. Is uh, what that we total are at, was. with with the donation of cash. We are at fifty eight hundred dollars. Now I, I I don't know if you heard, but at the start of the, this uh, twelve o'clock block, I had to raise our goal now to sixty five hundred oh. because the outpouring of donations has been so high, and you guys are pushing us toward that new goal. Okay. 6,500. All right. Awesome. Hey. Awesome. All right. Um, fish. We, we've been talking about fish all week. Fantastic organization. Yes. Here's a little video uh, about fish. You can learn more about what they do in our community. For almost 50 years, Oxford Orion Fish has been serving those in need in Oxford, Lake Orion, Addison, and Oakland Township. In 2019, fish experienced record numbers with 187 family visits per month, almost 5,000 individuals served, and over 200,000 pounds of food going out the door. Then in 2020, fish was rocked by the COVID-19 pandemic. The food pantry was forced to make changes to protect its volunteers and clients, including offering drive-up service. 
Initially, we had curbside. That was the only way that we were able to take care of everybody. And thank our biggest donor during that was Gleaners because the stores didn't have any products. So without Gleaners, we would have not been able to service this community. And then as of July, we have reopened and we've gone back to normal operations with COVID protocols in place. We have families that can come every 15 minutes. We limit the people that can come into the pantry at any one time. Everybody has masks on. So we're really following the safety protocols that we, you know, we have in place. But it's just been nice for the clients to be able to come back and shop to get what they need. It was a little difficult for them because we just had prepackaged boxes. It was curbside. And we would let them pick out a few items, but it was really just kind of a volume getting everybody in and out. So now we're really trying to resume normal operations in a safe manner. Since the holidays, the traffic has definitely increased. November was a very full pantry, December. In those two months, we typically do see an uptick in clients because we always have you know, little incentives and little extras for the holidays. But honestly, this month is the first time that we have opened up another shift that's gonna be starting next week because the volume of clients, it's tremendous. Um, I haven't seen this big of a surge since prior to COVID. We're here and we have the product, so we'd like the people to come, but by, if, they, if they don't need us, we certainly understand that we're happy for them. But our main concern is, you know, making sure, especially with kids, we want to make sure the kids are well taken care of. We don't want any child going to school, being hungry or not having anything. Our biggest need right now, I would say probably is chicken that we're having the most difficulty with. And then just really cash donations are the best thing because we're able to purchase things through the business to business with Meyer and also with Gleaners. So then therefore we're, you know, we can stretch that dollar a lot farther than we can an actual donation. And then as far as food drives, we have not had the postal food drive due to COVID the last couple of years. We did have a wonderful food drive at the holidays from the schools and they, they did a phenomenal job. So that was, that was very helpful. What qualification does a family have to meet to be able to take advantage of these services? just need. I mean, we don't have any restrictions. Before we always had restrictions for everybody, but now all they have to do is call us and we make it, we make it work. We make it work somehow. They can come in. The ONTV food drive is just such a wonderful gift. It's kind of that blessing after the holidays when everything is low and you kind of come in and step up. And then not only that, you really put it out there so that we get that you know the notice from the community and just as a benefit from your on TV we've then had people that have stepped up with Chris Barnett and you know out in Orion and then therefore we have more people that will come in and want to adopt a shelf so the the ON TV food drive has really been such a blessing in a multitude of ways and really the last two years it's just been overwhelming thank you <laughs> just Thank you from all our, from our heart. Thank everybody that helps us in any way they can. And to people that need it, please call us and please come in. We're here to help. All right, back in the studio. Great video about fish put together by our director uh, and studio manager, Joe Johnson. And I always like playing that video. It, it really gives you a look inside of what fish is. The volunteers that uh, run the whole thing and make sure all of the, 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 uh, the food's collected and organized, the shell's ready to go, and working with the clients. If you are in a food emergency, and I know we have a graphic for this and we love sharing this. Now, if you are in a food emergency, do not hesitate to call FISH. Uh, call them at their number, 248-628-3933. They've streamlined their uh, process to, uh, to get assistance. In the past, it was uh, an interview and some paperwork and all that good stuff. No longer. If you are in need, you can get help right away. So call that number, 248-628-3933. 3933 if you are in a food emergency. Okay, back here in the studio. Today is DIY Day, and I'm joined by Evelyn Doyle, longtime volunteer at ONTV. And she is here. We're going to chit chat about okay. ONTV and your experience before we send you off to do your show <laughs> called Guess What. Now, you've hosted 
and <laughs> produced. We were kind of laughing before we went live about all the different shows you've put together over the years with us. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be with Owen TV before we really get into your crazy volunteer resume here at Owen TV. <laughs> I'm, I'm chuckling because it was a pure <sighs> fluke that I ended up here. <laughs> uh, from the senior center, uh, part of the Orient Center, um, we were allowed to come over here and have free lessons yep. on running a camera, and which I thought, well, I, I might be able to do that. Yeah. That's <laughs> fairly straightforward. They're on wheels, they're not the, heavy. Yeah, you know. And then they took us into the director's booth. Yes. Oh, I freaked. So, right? So, and that is the actual, that is, that's what usually happens. So people go, oh, camera, that's the easy bit. We can run camera or we can, or the hard bit today, uh, <laughs> live TV. But you, when we take people into the control room and you see all those flashing lights, the big lights, and you said, all those buttons. Oh my <laughs> God, there's no way in the world I'll ever remember what to do. Yes, but you were curious. And so, yeah. what did we do? We trained you how to be a director. You definitely and you've been did. Directing food drive segments for years. George Sinnott and I created our first production, yep. which was uh, Active Living. I named it because I wanted people to know just because we're old doesn't mean we aren't still alive and still, active and yep. doing things. Well, George is a fantastic interviewer, so he got to sit on stage and interview people, yep. and I had to go in the studio and push and, buttons. And you're the one pushing the buttons, calling the shots. <sighs> it, the first day I did it, my head is <laughs> like <laughs> out to here. Heart racing well, well, a little bit? Uh, heart racing <laughs> a lot. And I did it. Yeah. It was like, oh, wow, I yep. did it. Yep. Okay, I, need, I want more. <laughs> Greedy gut. I think you got addicted to adrenaline there, Evelyn. I did. <laughs> I mean, I have directed so many yeah. programs. And the it, best part is I'm on the inside listening to all of these people talking, all of the things they have to say, the politicians. We interviewed them oh, before yeah. elections. Yep. <laughs> these guys and their football uh, yeah. thing. Uh, I had no clue what they were talking Terminas about. And, yeah, I mean, between you, Terramina and you, all of them. Yeah, you've had, a, you've had a hand in almost every show over the last nine to ten years here <laughs> it, and, and it, in some way. But right? it's been fantastic. I've yeah. learned so much just listening. Yep. I've learned, I love directing. <laughs> oh, I love doing it. I've learned to anticipate the conversation. <laughs> Somebody's talking and yeah. asking a question and I, yeah. from the inflection of their voice, I know to go to the yes. other camera because that guy's going to start talking. You, have you found now, have you found that you watch television differently? Oh gosh, yes. You see all the mistakes. You The, the mystery for some of this stuff is kind yeah. of gone, yeah. right? Yeah. And we, t we call that media literacy. You, you know how media is created, so you understand what the message is coming back at you, right? Oh, yeah. When you know how to create it, you understand how to read it. It it's has been a very fun journey. I can't, uh, we, I think I personally, my first production, because I won't count active living because I was in the booth. Yeah. But my first production was Grandma's Garden because I'm, I'm an active gardener. Yep. And with my friend Kathy, we started the first one. That's because right. Because she, hey, she knows things that I've, she's <laughs> forgotten things that I don't know. Yeah. But then she was done with that, but I well, continued you, you, it yes. as, as Grandma's Garden because I'm still a grandma, so I did and that. And a gardener. And a gardener. <laughs> well, then I went through everything that I thought would be of any value to people and thought, all right, what do I do next? Yeah. And I've got to come up with something. And he's been <laughs> asking me about pickles. Hey. Pickles. Guess what? Do you have? Yeah, well, well it's, it's funny I say guess what. I didn't mean to. Yeah. But the guess what show. The guess what show. Is okay. where you started to do cooking. cooking. And you did the non, like the easy brine pickles or your yep. refrigerator pickles. Yeah. And yeah. I told you that we started growing at my home after watching <laughs> your show and how easy it was. Yeah. My son and I, my, my family, actually, we, we grow our little cucumbers 
and my son and I pickle them. We're the only ones that like pickles. Yeah. So we're, I, we actually kind of up the game a little bit to semi-pro level. Now we're adding red pepper <laughs> flake and all the garlic. You know, but that's what you're supposed but, to and that do. Was, it's great. And without seeing you do that episode of Guess What, I'm like, Really? It's that easy? Yeah. The mystery's gone. Yeah. And I can do this at home. Well, and the that's, next the, that's one, the fun part about yeah. your program. The next thing when I did was onion soup. <laughs> like, I, this that isn't rocket the air science. Here for a this week. is onions <laughs> made into soup. Yes. And I have had more people tell me they make my onion soup really? recipe. See? Yeah, you, you actually get know. seen around town now. Yeah. But, but those are the great things, the variety of things. You, we, we say Evelyn is really the quintessential access volunteer. Okay. Right? Because you've gone through classes, you were curious, and then you decided, I want to learn more. And we're like, absolutely. Right? And it turned into what it is now. And what we're going to see here in just a moment is guess what? Uh, I, I can't remember how we get out of this. It doesn't uh, matter. <laughs> how can do we I get just, her over the table? But we're uh, guess can, what's gonna she's actually gonna do her show yeah. live here in the studio. Can one I more thing. Just throw one more thing yeah. in. In my learning curve, I one of the things we could do was to take a camera and go off site. I mean, I'm willing Ooh. to try just about anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, my motto is if you don't try, how do you know you can't do yep. it? So they gave me a camera. They taught me how to use it. A week or so later, w the seniors were going down to the parade float oh, place. I forgot about that. <laughs> shooting the, yes. And I had every intention of shooting these parade <laughs> floats, shooting the making of them, the new concepts of them. Yes. Only problem was, <laughs> you know, usually the green button means go. <laughs> Uh, not on these cameras. It was the red, red button. button. <laughs> so you got footage of my feet. I know. Every time you were supposed to record and it was uh, off. It was when off. When it was supposed to be off, it was on. I was so frustrated. We've all done it. <laughs> We've all done it. And um, it's so funny. And that when you came back, we we all laughed. I mean, uh, well, I and was you, laughing. You did too, because it was so funny and honest, and it's so. We've all done it, all of us, the staff. We've all done it at one time. But you it get didn't mixed ruin up, anything. and if you're on and on, no, it, it, man, they they gave us a laugh that we haven't had in a long time. <laughs> so not only are you volunteer, but you're giving us some chuckles, uh, Evelyn. So how about we do this? Let's get into your show. Guess okay. what? Okay. And uh, I think we have the intro to the show. So um, I'm just gonna. Send Evelyn on over to the other uh, staging spot Eagle. over here. I'm going to run over, I think, to camera two to fix it. Uh, uh, Joe, I think we have her intro. Can we play her intro real quick? I can't remember how we're supposed to get out of this. Thing. There we go. There we go. Go ahead. That looks like. Evelyn, guess what? Today we're going to go. Did you ever think of this? Um, you know, you can buy these heart shaped wired. Did you ever think that you could have three of them out of it? Wire cutters, wire cutters, and you have three different hearts. Now, on I believe it was this one. These are available at the craft stores. I think it's five for five dollars. I think that's how they come. Well, I took this wire, the smallest one, and laid it on top and drew a heart from the smallest heart. And in time, I will I mean, you can't hardly see it, but in time, I will paint this, add something to it. I mean, it's not a complicated thing to do, but it is an idea. Uh, if you want to use the, this for your decoration, I will tell you, it is, takes a lot of material 
to make a wreath out of this. A lot of a lot of folding in and out, in and out, in and out, which I personally find very tedious. So I will cut this apart and I will have three of them and it won't be quite so bad. Okay, next idea. I gotta tell you, I look even in grocery stores, craft stores, online, grocery stores, hardware stores, these are all places where I get ideas. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I guess I look at things a little differently. This was a wine bottle cart. I saw it and I liked the shiny green of it. I'm a sparkle person, I like sparkles. I liked the shiny green of it, so I took, again, one of these and cut out the bag, wine, wine bottle bag, and glued it on here. And I have a very pretty something, and it came with its own hanging thing, so I have something very pretty to put on my wall. But I wasn't done. I had more of the bag, so I glued, cut out and glued it inside the frame, and then I cut the green part of the bag and glued it to the side. So now when I get tired of one side, I have the other. I have a two-sided item that I can put on my wall. I like the shiny green. I think that's pretty. Did you ever think of taking an embroidery hoop and putting something in it? It's only temporary. You can change it out, Christmas, Easter, any time. Paper napkins are great for this. Uh, I use some twine to make the handle to hang it up with, and I use the twine to make the bow so it's not specific to any color of any season. So this can be changed out. Uh, this can go back in the box of Valentine stuff and to be put back in at Valentine. This was, um, you know, an embroider hoop. They're not very expensive. Also, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hang myself one of these days. I like, now I didn't do it to this one, but to go around it, now let me get this up where you can see it, to go around it to make it that much more interesting, did you ever think of taking rope to go around your pictures to make them more interesting? I find there's always, if you work on something, you get more ideas. Like, I wonder what it would look like if I did this. So that, you know, and of course there's always uh, the bigger one. I only brought a small piece of that but I think I like this one on it better because it's a contrast. That being said, again, the embroidery hoop. Yeah. Now, what, I, what am I gonna do with that? Well, I'll show you. Right here, I have this framed. These frames are like a dollar maybe $1.25 now, but anyway. Um, this is from a gift bag. Gift bags, whoever thought? Well, the wine bottle bag, but the gift bag, I liked the saying on this so well and the sunshininess and the perkiness of it that I cut up that gift bag and put it in a frame and it sits on a table. I think it's kind of delightful. Well, and then we come to, <laughs> and then we come to Valentine's Day. Sparkles, told you I like sparkles. This was a gift bag. And I took the gift bag, cut it out, put it inside the frame, well, before I put the frame on it, I cut out some of the sparkle things, hearts, to put on top. There's a sparkle there, there's a sparkle there. 
Oh, and there's a pink sparkle to give that some interest. And again, it is ultimately reusable because I'll, that'll take that out and I'll put it in my box that I have all of my Valentine's Day things and I can use it next year. That gives me the frame to do something else with. Back to my hoop. A little skinny kid's hula hoop. Here are some gift bags. They're not expensive. They're really not. Did you ever think of putting a gift bag in your hoop? Cut it out. Uh, well, I would draw it. I would definitely draw the outside of it before I cut it. And there are two pieces. You know, the bag has a front and a back. And it also has the lovely hangers. And you can change what you have on your wall for a whim. I like this today and I don't want it tomorrow. Take it out, put it in a box or whatever of your gift bags, and you can go from there. On a larger scale, <laughs> rope's caught. I found this and it's shiny and it's pretty, so it appealed to me. The other side may appeal to many other people. But again, my thought was how, fingers, how neat this would look on the bigger frame canvas. And then I could do various things around it. I could paint the canvas blue and then it would I'm going to mix the paint to get the right color, but paint the canvas blue so it would blend into each other, and then you could add flowers. What, you know, whatever decorations you want around the, uh, this thing is really fighting me, isn't it? Get there. There we go. No, no, no. Anyway, but again, you have two sides. You can make two of them sit side by side. Uh, for many years, triplicate paintings were in fashion. Well, you could do a duplicate, one shiny and one not shiny, which is what I plan on doing. Uh, <laughs> the blue may not look quite so good on my turquoise wall, so it's going to have to go on a different wall. But I like the idea of doing a duplicate of this for spring. I want to look at something flowers, something pretty, something that makes me happy for spring. That is what I have for you for this. Did you ever think of doing this? I hope it gives you some ideas. Uh, like I said, now these are interchangeable. Once you take these out, you have the frames to do put anything else you want seasonally in them. Um, there are some gorgeous wine bottle bags. Um, I want to explore what I can do with others, but it's going to have to be, have something, you know, pretty interesting in it. This, now I did this one, the, the drawing I did on the plastic because I wasn't sure that I wanted another heart decoration in the house because I have several. Uh, so now I can take the paper off, take the plastic off, and do whatever else I want to do with it. But, and I may warn you, with your wire cutter, I'm not sure how easy, because this is pretty strong wire, it may be difficult to cut them. I didn't try to do one. Um, you may need your hubby to cut these for you. He'll have his, his hand will have more strength for you. But that being said, ew, you know, there isn't any reason why you can't cover this whole heart with this white rope. I brought this, of course, because you're going to have to do a lot of measuring to make everything fit. I think it'll work out. I hope some of these ideas will just give you, you know, look in your grocery store. 
what is interesting, look in those, all those craft stores uh, for bags. Uh, just keep your eyes and your imagination flowing. You know, imagine, okay, what could I make this into? And in another segment today, I'm going to show you what my imagination took and made into something else. I thank you. I bless you all. I'll see you again soon. <laughs> tell us about fish. Tell us uh, all the new things happening at your organization. Right now, we're extremely busy given the food prices and you know the economy. And it, this is such a benefit. This this telethon more so than any other year, just given the food prices. And we weren't able to have some of the other food drives that we've had in the past due to COVID. So you doing this is such a blessing and really we'll hear from people two, three months down the road that, you know, they saw this on, on TV. So this is really the telethon that continues to give throughout the year. So I can't thank you enough. We were, uh, I, I think when Joe came out uh, to visit with you and we put some updated videos together about the organization and see how you guys are doing, checking up on you. And he mentioned that, that, uh, this isn't a one day or a five day thing that it kind of lingers because we do advertise, as you know, um, we put it everywhere we possibly can. They're in magazines and everybody's homes and the Lake Orion Living magazine and all that sort of thing. So it's good to hear that feedback that, you know, uh, there's still some ripples going on um, after the fact. So today we're actually doing very well. We just had two $500 donations uh, this morning. So that's another wow. $1,000 for the organization. And our goal, of course, is 5,000. I think we're just going to destroy that number. <laughs> <laughs> the corporate sponsors this year have been just outrageous. Can you uh, share with us uh, any other organizations that you work with that you would like to uh, uh, shine a light on? Um, definitely Love Inc. They do a lot. And I think sometimes they don't get the credit. And I know that sometimes they feel a little left out, but sometimes maybe our organization gets a little bit more than they do. So they're something that our clients are also, when they're clients of fish, they can also be a client of Love Inc. And Love Inc. will help, you know, any any, tor any sort of other issues that they might need if it's, you know, with housing and whatnot. And the other partner that we've really been doing a lot with has been St. Vincent de Paul, because there's been a, you know, big issue right now is housing and everything is kind of coming apart all at once. And they are really able to help with, you know, some of needs if there's, you know, utility bills. It's so the it's the cost right now to heat their their um, their homes and for fuel. There's just the needs are just endless. And right now we're hearing that I'll have clients that will call that will just be like, you know, single moms. They were working. They didn't make enough in tips so that there there's immediate food. And that's something that I will say it hasn't happened in a while, but I'm getting a lot of those phone calls. I get those emails that I need food right now. Yeah. And, you know, because nobody wants to ask for help. So that's something. All right. Uh, awesome brief interview with Michelle at Fish. Uh, we're going to have her actually in the studio on Friday live uh, to uh, say hi and thank you and all that good stuff. Uh, that is tomorrow from noon to two. We'll have uh, her in the studio and thank Evelyn. We're going to come back with part two of Evelyn's uh, Guess What uh, show. And uh, then we're going to have some more DIY, hopefully with Joey and uh, some other things, right? But before we do that, we're going to step away. I don't know how much time we have, but we're going to take the Lake Orient. Three minutes, okay. In about three minutes, we're going to go to the Lake Orient High School newscast. Uh, we've done that uh, on Tuesday. We're going to do it today, Thursday, and we're going to do it again on Friday. They do a special uh, newscast uh, for uh, the food drive. They've done it every year. And we have an uh, interview with Roger Smith, which we'll play probably later today. Uh, he's the director and the teacher of uh, the Dragon Broadcasting Program over at Lake Orion High School. So again, if you're in a food emergency, give Fish a call. Uh, uh, just like we heard in that, uh, that message there from Michelle, 248-628-3933. There's no waiting. If you need help, you can get help. Uh, there, there's absolutely no waiting. Uh, the resources are there for you. And reach out to Fish again, 248-628-3933. And uh, update on our donations uh, with uh, the donations from 
Uh, the crew at Home Depot and Alana Hart and all of her buddies down there are, are, are good friends at Home Depot. $5,800 uh, is collected so far in cash, and which is amazing. And the amount of food that they dropped off and items, like Alana was saying uh, during the interview, if you missed it at the top of the hour, she says, you know, toothpaste, shampoos, soaps. They even brought scouring pads and sponges and different things for home, uh, dishwashing soap, all these different things that you would need in a household uh, to conduct your business as a family and do your things day to day, right? So uh, they were great. Uh, their donation was unexpected. I would say unexpected in the cash side. They always bring in food, but having that extra $200 in donations and cash was fantastic, or $140, I think it was. So that was fantastic. And our other sponsors, uh, Canterbury Village with $1,000, Meyer with $900, and you know all the other businesses around town who, do, even, even our individual uh, giving, we had a, a donation this morning of $100 about 8 a.m. Someone logged into our GoFundMe account at orionontv.org. They clicked that Food Drive logo and it took them right to the GoFundMe and they donated uh, $100. Uh, Joanne Van Tassel was in, our good friend Joanne. Everybody knows Joanne around town. She's been a staple here in Lake Orion for a long time. She's had helped in so many ways and she even had a, a donation uh, to the food drive as she does every year. So we thank Joanne Van Tassel for her generous support of ONTV and FISH. And with that being said, uh, let's transition over to Lake Orion High School newscast. You're watching the 2022 food drive on Orion Neighborhood Television. Coming up on today's LOAM, a recap of the Ice Golf Challenge, a look at school store prices, and a new edition of Lowdown. Stay tuned! Good afternoon, Lake Orion. Today is Thursday, February 10th, 2022. I'm Brian Donahue. And I'm Lexi Davis. This is LOAN. The annual Fish Food Drive is wrapping up this week. We're partnering with Orion Neighborhood Television to collect donations this winter for the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. Students can drop off donations through tomorrow, and you're rewarded with service hours. Five items equals one hour, up to a maximum of five hours. Check your student email for more details. You can drop off your donation in room D351 this afternoon or tomorrow. Then log your donation on X2Vol and tag Mr. Smith. As part of the Fish Food Drive event, today's LOAM is once again being carried live on Orion Neighborhood Television. So we welcome viewers from throughout the community. Thank you for supporting the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. The Lake Orion Rotary Club is a local group that supports community members. They hosted their annual Ice Golf Challenge in downtown Lake Orion last weekend. Derek Steele has the recap. The 8th Annual Ice Golf Challenge was hosted in downtown Lake Orion this past Saturday. 21 teams took to the 9-hole course set up around the village. They had to conquer different challenges such as playing on the roof of a building or even playing on an ice-covered lake. Each hole was sponsored by a different local business. Today is our eighth annual ice golf, um, ice golf challenge fundraiser. This is the biggest fundraiser that we hold as uh, the Rotary Club, uh, the Lake Orion Rotary Club each year. Um, the proceeds from this event go to fund all of the things that we reinvest back into our community. It used to be we would play it out on the ice and a couple of years we didn't have enough ice so businesses all got together and we started making it more fun and playing golf through the businesses as you just saw through our building here. We treat this uh, building as kind of the warming tent. You all saw the, the, the gumbo station that we set up. All the meat came up from Louisiana yesterday. I have oysters in from Massachusetts and and uh, so we're, uh, we're rocking and rolling in here and the golfers play through our building and we share this building uh, with uh, Wayne Haney and Farm Bureau. This is my wife and I's building and uh, our law firm is upstairs. This event is part of the third annual ice festival. 
This year, Lake Grand and Oxford are partnering to bring the festival to their respective communities. Sculptures are through downtown Lake Grand and Oxford with the message of, We are stronger together. For WDBC, I'm Derek Steele. The Ice Festival continues through the rest of the month. Different events are planned each weekend. For more information, visit downtownlakeorient.org to see the full schedule. The school store, also known as the Dragon's Den, has been going through some changes. Ryan Wilbert shares the story. The American economy is always changing, and alongside this change comes problems like inflation. Inflation impacts markets and businesses across the country, but it can also affect even our own school store. We rose the prices in the school store because um, the products of our goods are going up because of inflation and we needed to up the prices by 50%. The drinks and the snacks are up 50 cents and the cookies are up 25 cents right now. So when we did our increases, what we did is we actually did a, a, a form. So we sent it out and asked people what they would pay for our prices. So that's how we determined what we should change them to. In the school store, we've never rose the prices before, so this is definitely different, but we're gonna have to right now because of inflation. So the plan for our prices is we increased them today. We did put signs out last week telling people that it was coming, and today was our first day, but the store was just as busy, so that's a really good sign for us. Even with the price increase, students are still enjoying their favorite snacks from the store. For WDBC, I'm Ryan Wilbert. And speaking of local events, Cam McCormick joins us with a look at what's going on this weekend. Here's the lowdown. What's up, LO? If you're looking for something to kick off Super Bowl weekend, today at the Royal Oak Farmers Market is their annual Super Bowl 2022. This event includes a handful of small businesses and vendors from the Metro Detroit area who are sharing the warmth tonight. If you and your family don't have any dinner plans, then come hungry to this event and try all kinds of soup from restaurants in the area. The event takes place tonight from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Royal Oak Farmers Market. Canterbury Village is celebrating Valentine's Day with a twist. This weekend, their Bloody Valentine live show as well as some haunted val Valentine attractions. There are two haunted attractions to experience, Sunnydale Hospital and Fright Manor's Dead and Breakfast, located in the castle. One haunted attraction general admission ticket is $15, per person, and two haunted attractions, general admission ticket is $27 per person. If you'd like to skip the lines, one B VIP haunted attraction ticket is $40, and two VIP haunted attract attraction tickets is $60 per person. The event is from 7 p.m. on Saturday at Canterbury Village on Jocelyn Road. That's all I've got for this week's Lowdown. For WDBC, I'm Cam McCormick. Now it's time to head over to Derek Steele with sports. What's going on, Lake Orion? Coming up on today's L Sports Report, recaps from vo boys varsity basketball and unified basketball. Stay tuned. The varsity boys basketball team played the Troy Colts last week. Raymond Valentine brings us the highlights. The varsity Dragons hosted Troy in a close matchup last week. The first period was low scoring between both teams. Troy up 7-2, but a three-pointer from Malachi Granberry brings the score closer at the end of the first. The game stayed neck and neck through the second. Both teams performing well. The score going into halftime was tied at 15. He'll do it. Puts his jersey on the scoreboard and he gets the three-pointer here for the Dragons. The yeah, scoring went Dragons back and forth in the third. The, the Dragons throw. able to stay Morrow, in it thanks to three. multiple threes Puts made by DJ Morrow. Third three of the night. Morrow now having an outstanding Lake Orion pulled away in the final period with a strong offense. The score ended 46-37 to for a Lake Orion victory. Jump shot, good. In Morrow. Just so offensively, uh, they were running the zone, so we knew we had to make a lot of perimeter shots. Um, DJ did a really good job of that, and then, um, you know, we just closed the game out with free throws and um, not turning the ball over. So that we just have to be sharper offensively and, you know, set better screens and get guys better looks. Offensive side, we just had to find it. There was a lot of gaps. They played a lot of uh, zone defense. And then offense, our defense, we just kept playing our Lake Orion toughness. And, you know, we kept uh, helping our teammates out whenever we needed help and then played as a family. 
Uh, we've been great. We played much better. You know, we have our chemistry is skyrocketing. And, you know, we're playing more as a team and as a group, and we're now we're executing everything that we practice. For WDBC, I'm Raymond Valentine. The Dragons' next game is later today. They will visit Birmingham Groves High School. Varsity tips off at 7 p.m. Lake Orion Unified Basketball season is underway. Unified Basketball combines players who may or may not have disabilities. The Dragons face Troy on Saturday to open the season. Lyndon Potter brings us the highlights from Little Caesars Arena in downtown Detroit. The Lake Orion Unified Basketball team tipped off their season here in Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. It was here that they faced off against the Unified team from Troy High School. The game tipped off with an exciting first quarter from Lake Orion's Connor Bodo, where he put up six in under four minutes. He wouldn't go unanswered, however. Troy Unified would score 10 of their own. In quarter number two, Troy would lean on Justin Wilson, who had four points so far. On the other side, Lake Orion had five different players score in this quarter alone. Lake Orion would steal the lead going into half with 22 points, followed closely with Troy at 21. After the break, Kamiri Doris came out and scored four points for Lake Orion. But Troy would utilize six different players to score a field goal each. This would give Troy a 33-28 to 28 lead before quarter number four. In the final eight minutes, Troy would seal the game away with A.J. Vankatash adding four to the scoreboard. Lake Orion's Jordan Dewey Barnhart would hit a three and even a buzzer beater, but it wasn't enough for Lake Orion to walk out victorious. The final score being Troy 39, Lake Orion 33. LO's leading scorers were Connor Bodo, who had eight, and Jordan Dewey Barnhart, who put up seven. We, it was very good. Uh, yesterday we went to the game, and that was perfect to see the Pistons almost win against the Boston Cletex. Now that I played here, we're continuing this season until March 5th, which is another tournament day. And we did really good. I scored around, like around 10 points, and it's really good. I actually got involved with uh, Dom Novak text me and was asked if I'm interested, and I was like, I like helping out the community. I like to get involved, and this is a really fun way of doing it. I'm very glad I did. We came in hot, scored a couple baskets, very close game all the way through fourth quarter. Started slipping away a little bit, but we stayed determined through, through the entire game. Unfortunately, lost by a couple points, but I think it really shows how good we can go from here. Uh, later in the season, you know, we're going to get better. This is our first game of the year. Uh, the Troy High we played today, This they've had a couple games already, so this is kind of our warm up here to the, the league play. It is probably one of the highlights of my school year. This is the second full year that we've done it. Um, and it has been an experience unlike any other. Uh, being able to be out here, really, you're able to see the joy that, that sports brings to people of, of all different shapes and sizes. For WDBC, I'm Lyndon Potter. The Dragons Unified team plays their only home game of the season on Wednesday next week. Tip-off is set for 6.45 p.m. If you can't be there in person, we'll have a live stream of the game on our website. Tune in at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Well, that's it for today's LL Sports Report. For WDBC, I'm Derek Steele. Your seniors of the day are Georgia Cur Curtis, Matthew Milne, Garrett Bouchard, Erica Moreno, and Sarah Sinnott. That's all we have for you today. Tune in to tomorrow's show for a preview of robotics and a recap of hockey. Or catch tonight's special primetime episode, streaming at 8 p.m. from the LOHS Commons. Have a thrifty Thursday, LO.
All right, back here in the ONTV studios live 12 to 2 for the Thursday edition of the ONTV Food Drive. Live to you from 12 to 2 all this week. Uh, we conclude our week tomorrow on Friday with uh, Lake Orion History Day. But today we are in do-it-yourself mode. Uh, Evelyn is here in the studio with her program, Guess What? She's doing it live right here. And uh, before we toss it off to Evelyn to finish up her uh, her segment number two, which is outstanding. I saw her setting up just while we were in the newscast, and I can't wait to see what's going on. But we want to thank uh, Lake Orion High School, the Dragon Broadcasting Program, their instructor, Roger Smith, for producing such a wonderful program. Uh, the Lake Orion High School video program has been in action for almost, I, I'm going to say 35 years, but it's probably 40. I know Roger will get on me for not getting that date right, but it's been around a long time, and it really is a model uh, program around the nation for high schools who want to have a broadcasting program. So we're happy to have them as partners with us on sporting events and the food drive and everything we do throughout the school year. All right, uh, don't forget to donate to the food drive. Uh, our goal has been increased. Our cash collection goal has been increased to $6,500 because of the outpouring of donations has been so overwhelming. Uh, we are currently sitting at 5,800 as you can see on your screen and that is a active uh, count going. So if you'd like to help us out, Please do so. Head over to OrionOnTV.org uh, and donate online. Click on the Food Drive logo to donate on our GoFundMe account. The GoFundMe account will be active through uh, business hours on Friday, which is about 5 p.m. You can also donate in person, bring your non-perishable food items uh, to help fill up the production van, our big, big, big white van out in the parking lot with the door open. Already we have, it's almost filled. It is we have some space for more donations, and we're looking forward to having yours. It's at 1349 Joslin Road in Lake Orion. Help stock those shelves at the food pantry. You can also donate in person, cash donations if you like, so you can avoid all those online fees. Okay, without further ado, let's get to segment two of Guess What with Evelyn. Take it away, Evelyn. Guess what? I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. One thing I forgot to say when Ian was interviewing me was how much support and help in my learning curve here that I got from the staff. We may have, uh, I remember one time, one time I pushed a button and the screen went blank. Uh, that was a wonder. We never did that again. But nobody reprimanded me. Nobody, you know, gave me a hard time. But what happened was, as time went on, they let me push more buttons. They let me learn how to do more things with the directing, what I could get the cameras to do. I learned how to direct my cameras. I learned what they were capable of, that I could plan ahead what I wanted them to do. That came with experience. But I have to kudos to the staff here. They're fantastic. Back to guess what? Isn't that pretty? I told you I like sparkle. Okay, isn't that pretty? Uh, of course, it comes out for Valentine's Day. It is nothing more than a wood. So you gotta look at stuff and think. It is nothing more than a wood candlestick that I painted silver, a plastic bowl, grocery store, put that on top. I actually painted the outside of this with silver paint so I would have more contrast. Oh, Does it work? Then I added, of course, all of the bling, which you get at the craft stores in sheets. And they're all sticky back, so they're easy to put on. You don't have to use your glue gun to put them on. So that is one of my, I started with this and ended with that. We have, let's see, that's okay. Now we're coming into St. Patrick's Day. I've got this thing, it was just wood, just wood. And I thought, eh, okay. It's green on the green screen, Evelyn. Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Then I thought, all right, if I add something to it, it will become St. Patrick's Day. 
save. Now I know that's all green, so I'm going to get that off of there right away. It is taking something, like I took that big shamrock, which was brown, and I painted it green, which of course doesn't show up now. But uh, a tip for you is each holiday, the stores come out with paper napkins for the holiday. Buy a small pack because you could cut them up and use them for your decorations to add to something to make it become more. And again, now I have boxes. Uh, <laughs> I have a box for St. Patrick's Day. I have a box for Valentine's Day. I have a big box for Christmas. I can't wait for Christmas time to come back and show you some neat things. All right, this I bought because I thought it was cool. Now, again, we can only do so much of this. I'll put my hand over the top. That is not what I saw, because it was near St. Patrick's Day. I'll put my hand over the top, and maybe you can see it. I saw a jar, a pot of gold. So I painted it black and green. The top is green. And then I, you can buy the coins at the craft stores and puff paint on the inside to make it pot of gold. And this is one of my decorations for St. Patrick's Day. Okay, this is a fun one. <laughs> I love ice cream, especially butter pecan. And there's nothing in the world I love more than pistachios. I have plenty of pistachio nuts. <laughs> I never run out of these. Well, yeah. This is what I made out of it. I glued all of the pistachio nuts. First of all, I painted the carton twice to give it more strength, more body. And then I glued all the pistachio nuts shells to the outside of it, painted it black to give it depth, then painted it blue and ran some silver over it, and then put this tissue paper uh, I, um, paper napkin on the inside. I painted the top and then added the birds to the top of it, put a little silver on it, and I have a very lovely little box to go on one of my tables, all from a crisp, uh, ice cream carton and pistachio nuts. Okay. Where are we going to go? Oh, we didn't quite finish. I think it's so pretty. I happen to have, or remember, I had a bottle up in the cupboard heart shape. So I did this a couple days ago. Just like, okay, what can I do to make it prettier or to make it stand out more or for Valentine's Day? Rather than going the hard red, I decided to go with the pink. And it was done and redone. And lace and ribbons and bows were put on it, and I hated it. So I cut them all off, started again. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with what I ended up with, but it was a process. Uh, don't expect your first attempt to be perfect. Um, in your eyes, nobody sees it but you. You can play with it, tear it back apart, and start over again. It is your imagination that's working. I was pleased with this. Uh, <laughs> OK, what am I going to do with this? Hmm? Obviously, I use Splenda. Okay. I find as I age, I don't like to get out of my chair every time I have a Kleenex, a tissue I need to dispose of. A uh, piece of paper I've written a note on. Okay, I've done what I need to do, throw the piece of paper. I'm not getting out of my chair and going in the kitchen and throw it in the basket. So I made a basket. I took this carton painted it. I won't show the other side with the pig because it's got green paint on it. 
but I painted it. Then I took, well, inside, I don't know if you can see inside are more animals. These are from calendars. These calendars these days are beautiful. I'll throw them away. Okay, so I glued uh, glue stick. I used glue stick on this and glued all of these on and then came back out and, like I said, cut the pictures out and glue stick them on and then put a piece of twine on the top. And this now sits beside my chair and that's my, my little trash can by my chair. Who would have thought? What else have I got? Ah. <laughs> Coasters. I thought they were pretty. I thought they were very pretty. So I thought, okay, why can't I put them together to make a box? Just a pretty something for a pretty something to sit on was my idea. Okay. Well, they didn't fit. They aren't all the exact same size. So poor me had to put more bling on them. So I filled in the spaces that didn't fit with this bling. You know, again, these strips that are sticky backed and it comes out in the spring and summer. It's heavy, so it can hold something substantial and coasters. It can be made out of any coasters you've got. Uh, something that suits your home decor. Uh, doesn't have to be these big heavy ones, can be much lighter. Uh, okay. You know, you get these boxes at the <laughs> store. And again, I told you I like bling. I decided, what am I going to do with this box? So I started off painting it silver. And that wasn't enough. And then I painted the inside gold. Uh, if you can see that, I painted the inside gold. And it's just a little wood box. I mean, there's nothing particularly about it. Um, went to put it together, and I thought, well, yeah, but. So I painted the back blue so that when you look through the butterfly, you can see something back there doodads, anything you want to put in it. I have an idea of getting several of these boxes and building like a pyramid. Uh, not with all this bling, but oh, and the pearls are all stick on too. I mean, that didn't have to use hot glue on that. But building a pyramid to like put in the bathroom for hairpins and combs and bar soap, you know, whatever you want to put in there. So that came from just about nothing. Oh, oh, all right, let's do this one. Remember I was showing you the uh, frames, the canvas frames, that I said you could get five for a dollar. I had been playing with uh, spackling and thought what happens, I painted it, I had originally painted it, uh, my bedroom's lavender, so this was going to go in my bedroom, I knew where I wanted it, so I had painted it lavender, and then I took a um, craft store lace doily and laid it on top, taped it down, and then I think I used uh, a knife and I pushed the spackling through the lace and left it for a bit for it to dry a little bit so that when I pulled the lace off, the spackling wouldn't come off. And pulled the lace off and I had all of this nice raised area. Well, it was flat. It, it, it didn't really do me. So uh, with a sponge, paint, a little bit of water, to, to loosen it up. Then I went over it with that sponge to give it more dimension. And it's 
pretty something to put on the wall. Uh, where are you going to go? There. I wanted, oh, well, let's do Easter. God forbid there's a holiday I don't make something. You can buy, which I did buy at the grocery store just recently, barbecue sticks. Uh, what are they called? Bamboo skewers. Okay. And they have a nice point on the end. Blunt on the other end. Well, when I was in the store, I found some really pretty, blingy <laughs> eggs, Easter eggs, that happen to have a hole in the bottom. Ta-da! So with that, you can make yourself a bouquet to put in a vase of Easter eggs. Doesn't have to be anything more than that. Oh, let's see, where are you? There we are. Isn't that kind of pretty? I've got some flat ones and some sparkle ones. Let's see, what we don't we have? Can't do green. <laughs> I have a blue one. Oh, they also open up. But I am not using them as gifts. There we go. That's a nice little bouquet of Easter eggs. And it's nothing more than bamboo sticks and cheap little Easter eggs you can buy anywhere. Imagination. We talked about frames before. And, eh, gosh, it's green, I'm sorry. Uh, can you see that or does it, well, you can see it here. It is nothing more than a frame with a tissue paper or, what do I want to say, um, wrapping paper or whatever cut out to fill the inside. I'm using the inside of this little canvas to make an Easter thing. And one of my eggs fell off. But three little Easter eggs on it, and you have a sweet little something to put on the table for Easter. I bought this, and he's cute. He's very cute. But they take an Easter napkin and put it on the inside. I can glue this to the inside, decorate the outside, and again, I'll have a two-sided decoration to put anywhere, any table, mantelpiece, whatever, for Easter. This is too cute to, to paint over. Okay, besides, it's got sparkle. I can't paint over sparkle. All right, I warned you, I warned you. I bought this Easter egg, just a wood piece, and painted it. And then I thought, no, I really want a Easter egg. Are you ready? So I got enough sparkle for you? <laughs> I was rather pleased with it. It's a little gaudy, I'll grant you. But in the corner of a table, it really looks sweet. What else have I, oh yes, I don't have too much more guys, just a little bit. Okay, then we're done. I started working with glass vases that I had at home. And this plain old vase, just a plain old glass vase that I sponge painted a neutral color on and then went back and sponge pa painted on a brown, uh, a pink, I uh, don't think I did any green on this. And then I took the paintbrush and, you know, spattered spatters of paint.
paint on it, brown paint, took the rope and wrapped it around the top of the vase, made a big knot to put on the top, and then to balance it out. Bottom. Now this is a the glass vase looks like if you paint it on the outside. This is what a glass vase looks like if you paint it on the inside. It's very shiny. So depending on the effect that you want, if you want the shine, paint it on the inside. Put your paint in, roll it around, around, leave it upside down to drip on something that's going to absorb paint without ruining your table. And that's the difference that you'll have in these two techniques. This is paint on the inside, spackle, just sponged on, and I think I used Epsom salts on it for the sparkle, and then probably went in with some very fine sparkle for it. This is another treatment for a glass vase. Now my last but not least idea for you is hot glue. You can actually take hot glue and put it on, I don't know if you can see it. What is there? A snake. <laughs> it was supposed to be a pretty something, something. On wax paper. Yeah, it isn't gonna work. Because as you try to take it off, so does the wax paper. Uh, okay. I'll try aluminum foil. Well, guess what? It doesn't come off without the aluminum foil. Well, that's not what I wanted. So I went in the kitchen and I got my uh, silicone mat that I cooked my cookies on and did an E. And in one of my um, molds, I did a flower. Well, lo and behold, it came off. You can't use <laughs> hot glue to hot glue this to glass. So you have to use E6000 or some other kind of strong and glued it and painted it so that you could see it because it's clear. And then with the flower, E6000, put it on. And then when I was thought it was going to stick, I took some paint and just painted the flower. I hope I've given you some ideas of what you can take and make something very interesting out of. Um, I love my box. I like to put my candy in there. Uh, I'm particularly pleased with how sweet this came out. Not that I didn't struggle with it, because I did. So, all things being said, here's to you. Happy Valentine's Day. All right, Evelyn, I'm going to do this because every time you astound, you do a great job, awesome show, always fun, always entertaining. And what you see on her program, guess what, with Evelyn, it, you, that's Evelyn. She is, she's so natural on camera, and we thank her for taking time with us and uh, coming in uh, uh, for our DIY segment. Uh, we're going to have another DIY segment in just a little bit. We're going to talk about how you can podcast or live stream from home. And we're going to, uh, Joy Tysick, our production coordinator here at ONTV, he and I are going to hop up on the stage and we're going to show you some gear that we use and some software that you can get cheap or free. And uh, so if you have any interest in possibly going live from your own home, you could do so. Before we do that, though, we'd like to thank our sponsors once again. Without their generous support, we would not be at our collection total so far of $5,800. Um, due to their generous support and uh, the other donations we received via GoFundMe and via in-person donations, uh, cash and checks, uh, to FISH, uh, we've upped our collection goal uh, on the cash side of things to $6,500. So you made us do it. They, they made us do it. We had to raise it. Uh, we couldn't sit back at 5000 anymore when we're almost to six. So we said, why not 65 So if you have uh, 
If you would like to donate, you can do so by heading over to our uh, website at orionontv.org. You can click on the Food Drive logo and it'll take you right to the GoFundMe page and you can donate right there. If you'd like to donate in person, you can do so coming over to the studio at 1349 Joslin Road uh, at the Orion Center. Uh, there's a big blue building on Joslin Road. You can't miss it. Come on in and drop off uh, your cash donations there or your actual uh, 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 non-perishable items. Bring those in too. We've got the truck out there uh, ready to accept your items or you can do it like Home Depot did. They just brought it in and uh, it's in our lobby. You can drop it off in our lobby and everything will be working out pretty good. Okay, so you can donate in person again, 1349 Joslin Road uh, here at ONTV. Our GoFundMe account will be active until the end of business on Friday, which is 5 p.m. And we hope you uh, get online, donate uh, frequently and generously uh, to help uh, stock those shelves at Fish. All right, so our sponsors today, we're going to have this quick thank you video to showcase uh, their generosity today. All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. We are so thankful for their participation. Today, this WDBC year. and the Broadcasting Two Class honors Walt Disney and the impact he has left on broadcasting and entertainment old world industry and how his legacy is. One thousand dollars and is also a five-day sponsor. Longtime supporter of the Owen TV Food Drive, Scalnick Ford is a one-day sponsor this year. Oat Soda is a new sponsor this year with a $100 donation to Fish. M3 Investments donated $500 toward our final goal and is a five-day sponsor. Kroger is helping us out again this year with a three-day sponsorship and Northern Wholesale Flooring is joining us as a two-day sponsor. Thank you again to all of our sponsors. Meyer of Auburn Hills and Canterbury Village are really helping us push towards that $5,000 collection goal. Here are two feature videos about these partners and their goal to help the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. Part of the, the Meyer culture is that we continue to give back to the communities and customers that shop with us. Uh, we're in a fortunate spot where we can give back to our communities and 2020 was a tough year for our customers and a lot of organizations out there and part of our goal is to try to give back and help those customers out that shop with us in the communities that we have our stores in. Well, cu customers are, are important to us, you know, without our customers, Meyer would be nothing. Uh, we're all here because of our customers and, and we understand that. and. We see what our customers are going through with uh, the pandemic, and our goal is to, to help them out. You know, they've been here for us for all these years, and now it's our turn to, to be there for them. How has the pandemic affected Meyer? Uh, it's been a struggle. You know, our team members, uh, the leadership, uh, our customers, uh, we've had a lot of changes over the last uh, 10 months. Uh, sometimes we change things by the hour, sometimes by the day, by the week. Uh, we've had you know numerous items that were hard to come by we went through that that time frame where you couldn't find toilet paper you couldn't find ramen noodles water uh, some of those items and we know our, our customers rely on us to get those items into their households so uh, it was difficult because at times uh, it was almost like uh, Christmas, Christmas week, every week for eight straight months. And uh, our team members really worked hard to try to keep the shelves full and uh, take care of our customers the best that we can. Uh, it's, it's been busy, it's been hectic, and we've had to uh, adapt to the change and uh, try to figure out what our customers need and do our best as a company to, to take care of those customers' needs. During this whole pandemic, uh, our number one priority during this whole thing was keep our safety uh, top priority for both our customers and for, for our team members. Uh, you know, there's been a lot uh, of concern. Uh, so Meyer actually has done a great job of putting uh, different uh, safety precautions in place. Uh, starting with our team members, uh, we start with health screens before our team members even punch in and uh, start their job. 
Uh, we've added uh, plexiglass throughout the store to keep the uh, registers uh, separating the, the cashiers as well as the team members. Uh, we've added uh, hand sanitizer stations uh, throughout the store uh, for our team members, for our customers, uh, social distancing stickers. Uh, we try our best to, to keep uh, everybody six feet apart. It can be challenging at times, but uh, we, we've implemented that uh, face mask. Uh, we've really tried to enforce face mask with both our, our team members and our customers, uh, again, to keep everybody safe. Uh, there's been a lot out there. Uh, you know, I could probably go on and on of uh, some different things, but safety, safety has been our top priority as a company. Hopefully the end is near. You know, I know 2020, I'm sure everybody's excited for 2020 to end, uh, including ourselves. Uh, and we just want to stay positive. We know uh, if we stick together as a community, uh, we can get through this together. Uh, we want to, to be there for everybody. And if there's anything we can do to help out, uh, let us know. But uh, it's important to us to give back and stay positive. It's almost over and we're going to get through it. Well, the history, my father bought uh, the property in 1991. Uh, it took him about two years to restore the property and, and open it up basically as a Christmas village and a giant Christmas store, which was the anchor of the business um, for a long, long time. Uh, fast forward to 2020, I bought the property for my mom and dad, me and my wife, Angie. And in the last 15 months, we've kind of had the quite the whirlwind of change uh, with Canterbury. We are no longer in the retail business, meaning the Christmas. Uh, I've leased out every square foot of this place to great uh, local vendors, Yates, Wooden Tulip, Scott's Farm, you name it. We have some really, really great small vendors here. And then uh, we've, we've gotten known for our family events uh, that we, uh, we do with our programming. Uh, dinosaurs, Halloween, holiday, food truck rallies, things of that nature. And our calendar for 2022 is by far our biggest ever, and it's gonna be a crazy summer here. Uh, just go to our Facebook site. I mean, we got everything on there. Uh, our, our social media team does a great job of keeping people up to speed on what Canterbury's doing. So just go to Facebook, Canterbury Village, and then obviously you can go to canterburyvillage.com on the web, but that'll take you to Facebook as well. I own Dino Stroll, um, and uh, we, we've been around the country. Last June was our first uh, uh, first road show in Philadelphia, and so we've been at it for about seven months now. And last weekend we were in St. Louis. This weekend we're in Chantilly, and uh, been all over the country. And it's been a whirlwind. So I never thought I'd be in the uh, dinosaur carnival business, but I am. And uh, I've had a lot of fun and me and my wife have had a great uh, 15 months and our charity and giving has been awesome and we're, we're very lucky and very happy. Well, we have three big charities right now. Uh, Jay Towers with Jay Juniors in 15 months, we raised over a little over $70,000 for his uh, charity, which is helping sick kids. He takes them to Disneyland every year. And then uh, <clears throat> we've teamed up with Metro Detroit Chevy dealers and the bottomless toy chest. Uh, we've raised in the last two Christmases thousands and thousands of toys. Uh, this year we decided to go a little above and beyond and we donated $5,000 to uh, the bottomless toy chest. They do a wonderful job with kid pediatrics uh, for 12 months of the year. And then uh, this year, uh, this summer, this past summer, we opened up our own food pantry on our campus along with Woodside Bible Church. We call it the food, Village Food Pantry. And uh, it's been a whirlwind. It's been very fun. Uh, I'm super uh, proud of the, the, the charity aspects we've given. And uh, in the next few weeks, we're going to uh, announce our fourth charity partner. And then obviously, um, Matt Pfeiffer gave me a nice phone call uh, about a week or so, so ago. Um, I, I can't tip my cap to Matt enough what he does for our community and if we had another 25, 30 Matt Pfeiffers in, in Lake Orion it would be awesome. And uh, he asked me, or Canterbury Village, for a nice donation for the uh, 
your food drive going on. And of course, I'm always willing to uh, donate and help out. And uh, you know, just because I have my own food pantry doesn't need other ones don't need help as well. So Canterbury donated a thousand dollars to uh, to the food drive and and your uh, your uh, program in the next couple of weeks here. But if everybody pitched in, that's well to do, like you just said in our community, and, and a lot of people have, you know, hopefully Oxford Orient Fish, uh, Village Food Pantry. Hopefully we can help. Uh, bring that to attention and really stop a hunger in our own little community of Oxford and Orion and hopefully continue it, you know, through Oakland County and then Metro Detroit. And you know what? We live in America. Nobody should go hungry. I mean, our number one goal in America, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, no matter what you believe in, nobody should be hungry. All right, back in the studio here. Uh, we can't thank our sponsors enough. We said it all week long. We just said it again. It's amazing uh, the generosity of our corporate sponsors uh, to work with the 2012 or 2022 food drive um, and uh, help us reach our goal of $6,500, not just $5,000 anymore because the generosity has been so great. 16 sponsors this year, a record number for us here at ONTV. Uh, and again, we thank them so much. Okay. It is a do-it-yourself day, and we're doing, you just saw the classic uh, Guess What episode with Evelyn, who's still in the studio here. She wants to learn about uh, live streaming and podcasting. She's <laughs> nodding from the audience. <laughs> I almost believe you, but that's great. So uh, so here we are, Joey Tysick uh, joining me on the stage here, production coordinator at ON TV. And uh, what we want to do, uh, we have about 18 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but we're going to cover a lot of ground. Yes. <laughs> now, Joey is a, a, a gamer and a streamer and all that good stuff. It's stuff, I, I don't know if it's generational, yeah, but I'm trying to understand it, trying to learn it. My son is all over this. We're putting on all our hats because if you saw <laughs> us on Tuesday, we were talking sports. Yes. You know, being the cool guys. And then yesterday, Ian got to nerd out with uh, his complete, jam session. Completely nerded out. Yeah. Now we're in my, <laughs> now we're in your, my your realm. Out. So I'm, I'm the newbie. I'm the one asking questions. Yes. So what is the setup? What are we going to talk about today, um, again, in our limited time? So we've been using live streaming a lot this year. Uh, with the pandemic and everything going on, it's just been something that we've lived by at this point. And we've done a yeah. lot of creative things with it. I've been doing it since about 2014, I think, is when I built my computer. Wow. Um, and I stream using Twitch. And it's just kind of a fun thing. I, I figure, you know, I'm playing video games all the time. Why yep. not just stream it out, see if anybody watches, and uh, it's just it's just kind of a fun hobby to do. And the, and the one thing I've noticed, and people who are watching this might not realize, is that this is entertainment for some people. Like yes. My daughter, her I canceled friends, my cable, and this is basically <laughs> what I watch. <laughs> so, but it, it is. It's like uh, my son watches, they, they watch these feeds, yes. and they learn about the games. They're, the people playing them are characters. Right. I mean, they are TV yeah. personalities. Well, And, and so. the other thing that I want to say, too, is that it's not so much video games anymore. It's kind of where it started, a yeah. lot of it. But especially Twitch has gotten really big into different things. Like there's chatting where people just do podcasts or people will just yeah. eat food. And <laughs> our, people are playing <laughs> instruments now, live streaming on Twitch. Yes, and there's yes. different categories and, and things And to we go were to. looking at possibly moving into to the Twitch realm because that's where yeah. the eyeballs are. That's where yeah. people are. So, okay, you have the gaming side of things. It sounds like some people, they come here to ON TV and they want to do podcasting, right? right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have this crazy studio set up. And sometimes they come, you, you've taught the class, I've taught yeah. the class, Joe are, uh, has taught the class. And here we are, and people walk in and go, oh, oh I can't afford this. <laughs> you know, uh, yes, we have a studio that's loaded right. with tens of thousands right of dollars there. worth of gear. You can see that. Um, and yeah, that's it. Do you want me to roam? Should I? Yeah, should I, I, roam? I, would, I think we should give them a little tour. We okay. got it. We got the handheld okay, for a we, reason. We got it. Let's have some fun. But we're going to show you some of the details that we have here. Right. But you don't necessarily. So I'm going to be on mobile. Here yep. I am. <laughs> Moving on take to the a studio. Tour. Where are we at? Okay. So we're walking <laughs> down Owen TV hallway. So yes, we have this really nice studio for you to do podcasts in, right? <laughs> We have microphones that cost about $380 a piece. We have speakers. We have an audio console here. 
that, uh, yes, it is a radio station quality or uh, pro professional grade stuff. We have software here with all these colors and things. <laughs> and like uh, Joey was mentioning, you don't need all this. We have it here for professional grade recordings. Um, and, but that's what we do here at ONTV. We have the items that you can't necessarily purchase on your own. But with the DIY today, Joey's showing us that you don't need all that stuff. This phone I'm carrying can also double as a live streaming device, as many of you <laughs> yeah. guys know. It's easy nowadays. It's really easy. So here I am. Oh. There's Jim. The one I saw a week, <laughs> oh, our we camera guy. <laughs> well, yeah. But so yeah, there's two right? different forms. Like you can go all in, like we do. Um, yes. And we, we get, because we can. And we get it. <laughs> we get the use out of it. Yes. Um, but if you're somebody like me that does it just as a hobby. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm not looking to make money with it. I'm not really even doing much. I just just do it to maybe entertain some friends yep. and hang out with people. And it's just kind of a fun thing to do on the side. So and, I have a simple, simple setup. And the gaming industry is monstrous. It's bigger than right. uh, Hollywood. I mean, it's bigger yeah. than the film industry. So and it's still growing yes, crazily. Absolutely. Yeah, so so today is even more simple than what I use even at home. I have I built my computer to stream, so it's a little bit more high tech. Today we're using a laptop, which I wanted to show that most laptops nowadays can easily it. can do it. Yeah. Like this, this laptop has a Core i7. Even if you don't know what that is, it has a little sticker on it that says it's a Core <laughs> i7. Most laptops that are just i5s, which are the previous generation from before that, um, they'll They're run it just enough. fine. And that's what I have in my, my own computer at home. It's usually the graphics card that I have a little bit more high quality. So once you just have your computer, you can, you can start streaming from there. Yeah. I decided today to show uh, with my console. So I have my Nintendo Switch plugged in. That's why you see Mario behind us. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you can use any console and you just um, need a, a capture card. That's kind of the most important thing. So today I brought my um, Elgato game capture uh, capture card, which is kind of the most popular. Um, today I plugged in using the Magewell that we, we use for yes, sports. And what are we talking uh, cost on this Elgato? Um, I think it's like 50 bucks. This is an older model and it's probably it's probably cheaper for this model at this point. Wow. Uh, the uh, Magewell we're using is a little higher grade yes. uh, broadcast side. I think we're just under 500, but yeah. we use that for industrial right. use, right? But the nice thing about these two is they're more designed specifically for, for gaming. Yeah. So it's 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 nice for that aspect because it can take HDMI to go to a monitor, but then the USB on this will go to your computer so yeah. that you're getting separate feeds and it makes it no, that's awesome. a little bit so easier. So already you're telling people if you got a laptop, most people do. Yeah. Uh, check the uh, the uh, Intel processor. What do you got? What kind of graphics card do you have, right? right? And it, it doesn't take much. I don't want to like freak people out yeah, with yeah. specs or anything <laughs> like that because you can go, I can get too nerded out. But well, yeah, I have a late model tower, yeah. and you know I don't do this, mm -hmm. but I I do podcasts or right. I've done recordings with just you know a silly thing, you know these little yeah. webcams. And, that's, and a webcam is what I use at home, and okay. most laptops nowadays they They're come built with in, them. Right. Yes. So ours, we have one built in right here. Yeah. Um, and it has a microphone built in. Mm -hmm. We all know this. Zoom is kind of the thing. I mean, we all know what that is due to right. the pandemic. Yeah. Right, so these, you know, 60 bucks or under, and right. you can get a HD quality yes. webcam. It doesn't cost that much. And Logitech makes some really good ones and cheap ones. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the, what the brand this one is. I think it's a C290 or something okay. like that. If, if people are interested, I believe that's the one yeah, I have. Yeah, if, if you're going to nerd out. Yeah, start. and it's, <laughs> it's cheap, and it's affordable, and it's great. Right. But again, you don't You don't need have to. It. It's, it's all up yeah. to preference. So Absolutely. all you need is a laptop, you can sign up for a Twitch account, YouTube, Facebook. We're on Facebook right now. Yes, we're running live currently. And so, you know, it, all it takes is a laptop. You pick out a game or something that you want to do, a podcast. You can use the integrated webcam, but then there are options to upgrade yourself. I brought in my microphone. The, that's a, the, uh, upgrading, right? Yes. So this is where you kind of go, okay, I have the basics. How deep where, are you? Where can I go? It's like your foot pedals. Uh, oh, yeah. Guitar. I only brought <laughs> six of them. Yeah. I have a lot more. Right. <laughs> So you've upgraded. Yeah, I, well, yes, I spent money <laughs> to say that. But right. uh, but yeah, when you upgrade, so the microphone, we know you can hear. You mm -hmm. can see with the integrated uh, webcam and microphones, they sound okay. Right. They sound good, but mm -hmm. for better, yep. if you really want to go nuts, like <laughs> this is our microphone, a Shure SM, uh, was it, 7, that we had um, in the studio, right? This is XLR professional grade. These mm -hmm. are in radio stations. And then we have 
something that you might not need this, but if you have something like this, you can go to an audio interface, a sound card. This mm -hmm. is this is 50 bucks. Yeah. This is high quality, 50 bucks. You can if you're into music recording, you can use it for music recording, you can use it for podcasting and streaming, the whole bit. So this is an outboard audio card. If you can see it, this is a Behringer. Mm. But it's like 50 bucks. Yeah. And we're using them professionally here at ON TV. Right. So you don't need this right. because and I believe, how is your microphone? And I believe mine, mine is a Blue Yeti, and I've had it for a while now. So I got it kind of when it was brand new. So I think I paid like $80. So at, at the time, it felt like a lot to yeah. me. Um, <laughs> But they have a model called the Blue Snowball, which is yes, one below, I've which is that. even cheaper. It's got the and round top on it. Yeah. That's a perfect entry model for anybody. And um, these are USB mics. Yes, right? they plug right into your computer. So again, computer, microphone, and I try to keep everything just USB connections yeah, for we, the most part. We are literally two cables yes. plugged into this laptop. Yeah, and that allows you to do everything you want. Um, we do also use a lot of OBS, and OBS I think is kind of key. It's my go-to for streaming software, recording software. And OBS, for those who don't know what it is, open broadcast software. Mm -hmm. I think it's the, or I think that's what its uh, yes. term is. It's o open source means it's like people like you and I who know how to code. They yep. sit down and they work on it as a unit. It's a community building right. the software, and it doesn't cost anything. It yep. is free. It's free. And all you have to do is um, set up your sources. Is my head in the way? And <laughs> the, yeah, there, a little bit. But we did make, I made a video over the pandemic about using OBS. So you can find that. Uh, it should be on our YouTube channel or our video on demand. Yep. Um, but basically what you do is you just add your microphone to the source list here. Um, I think, Joe, if you could can go we full the, screen. Yeah, full screen on the, uh, the laptop. And then, so you have your sources right down here. And what you would do is you would add a source. You'd find either an audio input, which is what we're using for our microphone. Yep. And then there's a video capture device, which is what I'm using today. Um, but if you're using just your laptop, you can just use the display capture. And that captures what's on your screen at all times. And that's kind of the easiest thing. As you can see, the, the sound bar is moving. That's because it's picking up my mic. So you can see that green bar going across the screen showing that it's picking up. Test one, two, three. Yep. Yep, it's there. It's easy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's really kind of... And I'll just I'll just open up. It's really hard to believe it's free. Yeah. Like, uh, so if Oops. my wife's going to claim that I'm a, uh, what do you call it, info sale, <laughs> <laughs> infomercial <laughs> salesman guy. But it is free. And when we were using it during the pandemic, we were working out of our basements, you mm -hmm. know, uh, trying to keep information alive in town. Right. Uh, messages, uh, where to get food, you know, for seniors getting uh, rides to uh, yeah. the doctor's offices. And we were using this software. It's free. Mm -hmm. A microphone. You were editing at home, working at home, putting videos together. The whole staff was. I'm doing a podcast from home. Yeah. And a t whole TV studio is still functioning with this free software. Yeah. Now, normal people aren't going to be making it, right. you know, doing what we're doing. We are pushing it to its limits. But on the basic side of things, for streaming, how easy is it? Uh, well, so today, <laughs> I decided to stream through Twitch. That's because of what I usually use. Um, but you can also use YouTube and things like that. All I did today, which this is on a different computer that I haven't used before, as far as my Twitch account, all I had to do was log in, and it automatically connected everything for me <laughs> <laughs> to my Twitch account. So you do have to set up a Twitch or a YouTube account. Uh, Facebook, and then that'll make it easy. So now I've connected. I'm going to hit start stream. It's connecting, showing that I'm green, Crush showing that fingers, I have everybody. a good thing. <laughs> and everybody then, hold their breath. No. So now on the back end, there we there are. There we are. That's that's the stream. That you fast. can see Mario in the background. Um, this is kind of the back back end of your stream. So you can see your viewers, how many views you've had, how many people have been following you. So this is the interface. Yes. So everybody at home, if they were on Twitch and following your stream, it would just be a full screen. Yes, and all, just they, like all they would really TV. see was the, the Mario display in the background. Um, but I just wanted to show the kind of the back end. And the back end is just as easy. Um, you can bring up your chat really easily. That's in this little window down over in the left here. See, and that, I'm glad you brought that up because those elements, the chat elements, mm -hmm. are what make this so interesting yes. because yeah. it makes not... You know, you, you're making content, you're streaming mm -hmm. things out, you're playing games, you're mingling with other friends, maybe you're playing group games. Right. But the chat uh, makes it into a community. Yes. Because those who are watching can say, hey, I like you, what you're doing, and then you build a community around it. Right. And it, it's, 
you never see these people, yeah. but you have a community you're building that you have like-minded people, like gaming ideas, yeah. and sometimes people pay money right. to watch yeah. you pay, play these games people, or people donate patrons to these people stuff. because they feel Couldn't an attachment, it? which a little bit crazy sometimes. I know. But, <laughs> but at the same time, yes, it, it, it's kind of a place that some people go and that's you know where they have a, a feeling of community. Yeah, it really shrinks down, like uh, it, it blew my mind when yeah. my son was doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a, a Xbox. Yes. And during the, the shutdown, he's, I heard him laughing his head off in the basement. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? We're all walking around mopey going, oh, pandemic, and he's down there having a good time. I'm like, right. what are you doing? Headset on, got his console on, and he's talking through six of his buddies, gaming away, yeah. and that really kept him going. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the setup, easy, mm -hmm. easy peasy. DIY, you have most of these items in your house yeah. already. Yeah. Um, where do you usually shop for your gear? Do you have a specific? Does I that matter? No, I, I typically just go online. Like Amazon is honestly the easy way to oh, do it. Oh, Amazon. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a. <laughs> but there, like, if if you want to get deeper into the thing, uh, into like PC, you can go to like Newegg.com and things like that. Oh yeah. Um, they have a lot of stuff, and they'll accommodate for what you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, and, and again, using the resources that we use to stream, you can go on YouTube, figure out what is kind of your budget, what yes. you would want, what people do before. That's kind of what I did to get an idea of what, how far I wanted to push it. And that, you know, YouTube, how-tos everywhere. Yeah. You get good information, really good information, sometimes really bad information. So, <laughs> you know, sample it, make sure you're doing your due diligence before you buy gear, talk to friends. Uh, the good thing about Amazon, too, is you get it, you don't like it, you can send it back. Right. And if it doesn't work for you. So I think we're up against the clock. We're coming yes. close <laughs> to it. Where are we at? Anybody, Steve? we got two minutes. Okay, so before we get out of here, Joey, thank you so much. I hope this is informative. I see a show in our future that is longer than 18 minutes. <laughs> but this Perhaps. is the type of thing we do at ONTV. We try to figure out technology, share it with you. It's not just about making a TV show, right? It's about uh, engaging with media. So before we get out of here, uh, Ian Locke, Joey Tysick. Here for the uh, 2022 food drive on a Thursday, DIY. Stay tuned for tonight from 7 to 9. We have other DIY programming, how yeah. to uh, author your own book, mm -hmm. which is a great feature. Um, and we want to thank our sponsors once again. Again, our goal is now $6,500. Get over there to our GoFundMe account at orientontv.org and give today. Don't drop off your physical donations here at 1349 Joslin Road at the studio, and we'll take care of you. That's it for 12 to 2 on a Thursday. We'll mm -hmm. see you tomorrow at noon. Final Friday, day. Friday, the last day of the food day, uh, food drive, uh, and that will be our his Lake Orient history. Yes. So that's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow.